Dan McClory, he is the managing director, head of equity capital markets and head of the China desk at Baustet Securities. Dan, good to have you with us. Thanks, Michelle. Great to be here. So, Dan, no one wants to touch Huawei with a 10-foot pole, just listed all of these companies in the U.S. and Europe cutting ties. What is the signal to you that Huawei is now seen as a national security threat? Well, they've always been perceived that way, but the interesting part is now the world is sort of listening and following along and where President Trump is always cited for being a polarizing figure and acting in nationalist ways. He's really united large parts of the developed world behind him, um, certainly with his China policy, but specifically with these actions against Huawei. Well, it's interesting because uh, the Wall Street Journal reported that the top intelligence leaders from the Five Eyes, the intelligence sharing network, that's Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the UK and the US, that they reportedly had a meeting in July in Canada and they stressed the need to contain Huawei. Now, Dan, Huawei says that it is employee owned. It's not beholden to Beijing or any government. But is it more than likely that the Chinese government could or would be using it for nefarious purposes? Well, I think certainly from its lineage as, you know, what could at least be claimed to be a, a state-owned enterprise or a formerly state-owned enterprise, it most, it most certainly has, has links to the government in some form, which is not uncommon for, for large industrial corporations in China. I think where it starts to get even more complicated, though, is some of the chip design that's being used and some of the banter, right. and it hasn't really been proven, about those chips are designed to capture certain pieces of data. Um, it hasn't been proven exhaustively yet, but that's certainly the threat upon which a lot of this is proceeding. And, you know, you have the uh, uh, trade dealings with Iran, allegedly, which has put everything on, you know, such a bad list and has resulted in the uh, detention in, in Canada. So I think there's just an overwhelming amount of charges or potential charges that, that are making them quite the hot potato these days. Yeah, and uh, the chip that you were referring to, a uh, report by Bloomberg that said China had implanted tiny chips about the size of a grain of rice in a range of equipment right. from um, Apple to Amazon, a whole, a whole bunch of uh, companies that use China. So the threat then extends to all things manufactured in China. That certainly seems to be the sentiment here that uh, we can't trust it if it comes from China. Is this convenient as uh, the U.S. Is, gear, is, is really getting into those uh, trade disputes with China? I mean, how does this play into those trade talks? Does it give the U.S. an edge here? And with all of these European companies on board, are we getting that coalition of the willing perhaps uh, potentially coming together on this one? I think you make a good point, Michelle, and that is these issues are most definitely related. The, the pressure that President Trump has been able to exert, first single-handedly, then with the Europeans and now with other corners of the world, uh, in this whole China trade dispute is, is unparalleled and unprecedented. And clearly Huawei is a, is a piece of that particular platform. But I would say that the, the bigger overriding issue, and you're alluding to it, is this Made in China 2025 doctrine uh, that President Xi has introduced, and it's really a signature part of his platform, which surprisingly he appears to have backed off uh, just in the last week. And, you know, the, the backdrop for China 2025 is for Chinese state-owned enterprises, largely financed by the state, to create national champions that then go out and kind of dominate the world. Right. And first, President Trump stood up, then the Europeans, and, and so now there's, there's a lot of pushback. So there has been a definite step back from this by Mr. Xi, which again is, is, is very surprising. So I think that's the larger issue, and it's been framed in the alleged theft of intellectual property, which you know the U.S. Department of Defense says is in the $600 billion a year range, just, just relating to the U.S. alone. So I think that's the, that's the larger issue, and certainly Huawei has been another interesting plank in that whole platform. It's very visible, very current, and it's certainly being acted upon. And again, isn't it, isn't it ironic that Trump, who's seen as the polarizing figure, is now kind of getting the world to unite around him and, and even bipartisan Washington to unite yeah. behind him on this China trade crusade? Yeah, really, uh, the first to really hit home on uh, the dangers of uh, China's intellectual property practices. Dan, thanks so much for being mm -hmm. with us. Dan McClory.